I'm planting flowers. Prickly flowers. Ow. Ow. Yes. Ow. Flowers are happy. Oh yes, these are going to live a long and fruitful life, I can tell. Yes, yes. Rotten wood. There's something back here too. I don't know if this is any good. Please, no snakes. Eh, no, it's pretty gross underneath. I have a project or two in mind for which I need rotten wood. Well, not really rotten wood so much as weather-worn wood. These are mostly what I'm planning to use. Wait, where's the other one? Oh, I put it outside to dry. Here it is. Look at that. Now look cool. The cool part of this is I can just use old wood that we were going to throw away. I actually pulled this up today because the bottom of the post broke and I had to replace it. So we shall see how it turns out. But right now I need this dirt to dry so that I can brush it off and not leave mud. I caught a mouse recently and I put him in this thing. It's like a drawer. He goes in and out like that. And he made his way out of here and into the edge of that and on the outside of this. So then if you shined, if you looked in like this, you couldn't see him. And I was like, oh no, he's running around in the house somewhere now because I had this thing in the house to show people. And uh, then I shone a flashlight into it and you could see his silhouette over here. So it was like an invisible mouse. You just couldn't see him. He's fine. I let him loose outside. He ran away, so he'll survive. I have been doing some wood carving. I made things. I don't actually have anything out here that I made. I have a bird. This is my second bird. It's much better than the first one. It's made out of red cedar. It smells very nice. It's not done yet. I like to take my time and just kind of switch projects back and forth. This thing I've been kind of working on since I started dabbling in woodworking. Uh, just trying to remove the bark off of this and I'm getting gradually better and better tools for doing this. You wouldn't think it would be that hard. Usually bark just flakes right off, but this bark is like as hard as the wood is. So it's really hard to remove the bark without damaging the wood underneath. I want wood to stay intact so that I can sand it smooth as much as possible and then I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it after that. I have a turtle. It's a big turtle. I didn't finish that either. I don't know if I'm going to. I was gonna make it all cool and detailed and stuff but the wood that I chose for this is not good and it has a lot of soft spots so it's really hard to carve smoothly and in a controlled manner without the carving tool just finding a soft spot and burrowing in and making a big hole. This is my carving tool. It's sort of a Dremel type thing on a flex shaft. There's the motor up there. I did have another one. It was it was cheaper and it was totally contained in the handpiece, so it was like huge, like that big. That was really hard to hold on to in control and it ended up burning itself up because the uh, the dust from the carving would get into the motor. But that won't happen with this one because the motor's up there. I have a bunch of very various various pieces of weird wood with interesting grain that I want to do things with but I don't actually know what to do with half of them. I made wall hooks. I have some of these in my room. Really easy to make obviously you just find a stick and then cut it and carve it and hang it up and hang coats on it. That was my own brilliant idea and I'm sure no one's ever done that before in the history of the universe. Look at this. It looks so nice. This is the other side. This is what it looks like but if you cut into it and look at the inside it's totally different. Check out this thing. How did that happen? That wood grain, look at that. It's all swirly.
apply with a handheld spreader or by hand. Ever since I started planning this this thing that I'm gonna make, which is sort of, it's, it's wall art for my wall because I need a thing to hang in place of a poster that I took down. Uh, I've just been realizing how many things can actually be done with scrap wood and rotten wood and wood that you're not gonna do anything else with. I have some things that I wanna make. I ordered a belt sander for the thing, the main thing that I'm trying to make right now. And uh, I ordered it quite some time ago and it was supposed to be here three days ago. It's not here yet, it's still being shipped very slowly. So I'm waiting on that. And today I went tromping in the woods and I found a couple of logs that I wanna pull out of the woods and let them dry. Check this out. These are in the back of our woods. We barely ever come back here. But it's honestly pretty cool. This is one of the logs that I'm gonna take back. I'll stick it in the workshop, let it dry out, and then cut into it and see what we get. Then there's this one. This one is actually the one that used to go across the creek right back there. And as kids, we would walk back and forth across it to cross the creek. The log got too rotten to walk on, so somebody moved it back here and replaced it. I'm gonna take this log and uh, let it dry out like the other one, see if it's uh, good enough on the inside to do something with and see if we get some cool cross sections out of it. I don't know if I'll actually do anything with this or not, but uh, I'm just waiting for the belt sander, so look at that. It's a mossy brick. Moss is cool. This is a mess. I made this when you weren't looking. It's a box. We, last summer, we had to cut down a big uh, hickory tree. front yard and my mom really liked the big hickory tree so I made this for her for Mother's Day out of the hickory tree it's a cool box it needs to be oiled one more time I also made this it is my spoon of power notice the holes the cracks it will never hold water but it will always hold power I'm at my sister's house we need to fix this porch the roof something's wrong with it I think it needs more of a slope over here, or something like that. Hello. Look, here. Look. He's so traumatized. He's keeping away from me. Come on, Dan. I'll touch it. Woo. Yeah. Can you not? Come hold him, baby. Come here. You want him on your shirt? You want to wear him on your shirt? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get so excited. I've got mama. Oh, mama birds. Mama birdie. Bird fly. Mama fly. It's like, did it fly away? Yeah. Oh, mama fly. <laughs> look, look, mom. Look, look. Fat, fat squirrel. Squirrel. Fat. <laughs> yes, that squirrel is fat. He's only about 166. I grabbed a couple of them. Oh, that's fine. I got the breakfast sausage one that he got last time. It's mine. You can have this one. Water's bad. You just scared him to come back with a chicken. Yes. Meat and cheese. That's all of the food groups. I can agree with that. All three of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was a statement, not a question. <laughs> You're done you with this. Quit that. Well, that was fun. We got the porch fixed. It seems to be draining much better now. And we made strombolis, which is a surprisingly cheap and delicious meal. And I have leftovers. You only eat half of it. It makes a whole meal, and so I'll eat this tomorrow. 
Summer is really getting started now. I'm not a fan of summer. Okay, I got a sander, and it's time to make some stuff. Focus. Focus on me, right here. Yeah. First thing we need to do is sand these puppies. Okay, well we gotta remove the dirt first. Now I actually have yet to try this, so I am excited to see how well it works. It's actually leaving, uh, leaving paint in the pattern of the grain, and I'm not hating it. I don't think I want to go any deeper than that. I think that looks really cool. Look at that. The next step is to cut this into blocks, sections, about that wide. I'm not going to bother measuring these because I want them to vary a bit. to my hand as I am willing to get. Besides that, the end of the log is just kind of gross. I am gonna have to clean that lens. So here we have a bunch of blocks, and I think they look really cool on the end. It varies the uh, pattern of the cracks a bit as it goes down. I'm gonna sand this surface as well, and then what we're going to do is we're going to arrange them all on a big board kind of a random pattern. Okay, not random. We want the short ones to not be next to other short ones, etc. Deliberately random. And it's gonna be art. It's gonna hang on my wall and uh, it's gonna look cool. They're called sound diffuser panels. This wasn't my idea. I've seen a lot of these on the internet. Wooden diffuser panels for sound. Basically, if you're unfamiliar with this, when there are two flat walls uh, directly across from each other, then the, the sound can just bounce back and forth between them and that's what causes an echo. But if we put, hang things like this that uh, have a rough or uneven surface that bounces the sound in different directions. I'm not really too worried about that, frankly. My room doesn't have an echo as it is, but I just thought it looked cool. So obviously these are not enough. That's why I have several other uh, 4x4s over there, old worn 4x4s that'll hopefully have some cool cracks and features in them. All right, so here's the thing. We got the wood cut. I got, I cut all the logs that I had, and I was actually surprised. We got some really cool cracked pieces out of the other, uh, out of the other ones. I was worried that only the first one was gonna be cool looking, but these actually look really good. But here's the problem. I was planning on having the thing be six by 12, and I only have 40 here. I do have another log I keep calling them logs. I have another board right here that uh, I wasn't planning to cut open because it, obviously it doesn't have any cracks at all. It's not old or aged. It was just too short to be used, so it was just lying around not being used. But even if I cut that up, I'm still not going to have enough of those. So I may have to track down another weather-worn 4x4 to make this happen. I actually didn't believe myself that this wasn't enough because it looked like a lot, so I have arranged them and I was right, they're not enough. It needs to be at least six squares wide. Uh, maybe wider would be, would be nice, but I think this will do. But the point is, it's not long enough. I need it to be longer. I was hoping for 12, I'd settle for 10 rows. Right now we only have six full rows going that way. I need more wood. On the plus side, this is looking really, really cool. And once these get sanded on, on this surface and oiled, it's gonna look amazing. This is one of the nicer parts of summer. At least it's pool season. I'm draining all of the gunky, gross water out of the pool. Hopefully this evening it will be drained and I can clean it up. I found another uh, post that we can use, fortunately. So I'm gonna go get that hopefully later today. Okay, we're gonna go get that post. It's at my papa's house. There it is. He put it here to keep his workshop from getting away, but these days it's well enough trained. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. So we can just set it free and take this post. How deep did he bury this thing?
like there's something at the bottom holding it down. Look at that. I am all the way at the bottom, but it's still stuck somehow. There, the rest of it can just stay down there. And this one almost seems too good to uh, slice up for this project. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the uh, wood grain is like worn away by the wind and rain to leave a 3D shape. That looks really awesome. But it does have some great cracks down the side. Okay, I filled in the hole and I am ready to head home. I put the post out there to let the clay at the bottom dry. And today, of all days, a few hours, mere hours, before I was gonna come out here and finish the thing, it just starts pouring rain. So, it's ruined. Okay, it's not ruined, it just has to dry again. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like rain. I love rain, I love thunderstorms. But the wood needs to be dry.